bit scared, I don't mind admitting. I'm a little bit out of my depth at the moment. It really does feel big, it feels massive. I'm apprehensive, anxious. Yes! 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 Come on! That is, without any shadow of a doubt, the hardest earned carp I've ever caught. We had 20 year old information to go on. No one wanted to tell us anything about this lake whatsoever. I don't mind admitting, I thought we were gonna waste our money and get absolutely nothing. A proper roller coaster ride, and I'm so pleased that we've done it. We are back on the Euro Tunnel, um, and that can mean only one thing. Uh, me and Daryl are off to central France for another epic adventure. And um, if we'd bitten off more than we could chew last time, um, this is taking it to a whole new level. After lengthy negotiations, we've arranged with the park authorities to film at an enormous 900 acre lake that's more like centre parks than a carp fishery. It's basically the French version of the seaside with constant boat traffic, cyclists and walkers, and no less than four proper beaches, one of which is an actual nudist beach. Carp fishing is allowed, but it's strictly days only, and all we have to go on are rumours of huge fish that I heard about 25 years ago when I fished another massive lake just up the road. We found only one trophy shot on the internet, and we still don't know for sure if the fish is from this lake, but it's an 80 pounder, which does tie in with the big fish rumours. Words already got out that we're going and Pecky's had plenty of cryptic messages from worried European anglers not wanting us to let the cat out of the bag. Added pressure for sure, but definitely a good sign. I'm already in France fishing a huge reservoir. I've had a hat trick of epic 50, so I'm absolutely buzzing. From chatting to Dan, I'm sure he's properly chomping at the bit too. It's a tall order, we've got very little information, we're going in blind. If we could pull this off, this could be a trip of a lifetime. So we've just arrived, just seen the lake for the first time, and it's uh, it's big, you know, but that's exactly what I was hoping, big, wide. We know there's big fish out there. It looks proper, it ain't gonna be easy. It's a public park, there's a lot of people around, but it's nice. You see the mountains in the background, covered in snow, the Alps, and uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just super keyed up, you know. It's, it's prime time, we're into May. If you're ever gonna come to a big, wild lake and try and find some fish, now is that time. The lake looks absolutely awesome. Still a bit of trepidation, I've got to be honest. I will feel much better when we see a carp, 100%. We're going to go out in the boats now, um, just have a bit of a recce. We're ahead of schedule. We weren't planning to do anything today at all, but we're just going to go out and look today. Um, the back of the islands behind me, 500 yards away, looks really good. You know, the wind's sort of, uh, sort of really calm over there. It's sort of in the lead of wind. So that's going to be definitely somewhere we're going to head for. But, um, at the moment, everything we see today is a bonus. Some sexual spots here, man. Oh my God. Right at the mouth of the Out of Bounds, just some proper triple badass naughtiness. Down to Daryl, come in, Daryl. Hello, mate, can you hear me? Yes, mate, loud and clear. Absolutely, millions of features everywhere. It just looks like proper car habitat. The um, the out of bounds bits, um, like roped off with boys, um, with like a rope along the surface to stop you going in there. But on the on the mouth of it, as, as you're obviously like fishing towards the the out of bounds, there's just this massive sandbar thing out here that just it screams dump a load of bait on it. Right, can't wait to get out there. I'll see you in a minute. Roger. 
weed up to the surface here almost. Uh, this is not going to be easy. Big clear area coming up now. Big clear area. That looks mega. Big shallow bit going down. That's the spot, 100%. Go on then, what are you saying? It's big, it's really big. I feel massively out of my depth. Why? <laughs> massively out of my depth. I haven't done this for so long, it's so weedy. But, but, but you can see the bottom though, we're, we're putting it down with the boat where we can see it's not weedy. Yeah, I know, but yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there's some absolutely prime spots in there, there's some prime real estate out there. Yeah. It, it all it all looks epic, you know. Any any area where we find fish, I'm I'm sure we could catch them there because there's always there's, there seems to be spots everywhere. Yeah. But that out of bounds bit just is frying my brain. It just looks like carp utopia behind. The, it's like the, the Garden of Eden. Not seen any fish though. Nah. No. Were you expecting to? No. I think, yeah. I think they're all in there. Really? <laughs> I think they're all in the in the. In the you in can't the get utopia. into there then. No. But. But that we've got massive winds coming tomorrow. I hadn't actually seen that. I thought we were just getting lovely sunshine for the whole time we're here, but that's not what's happened tomorrow, is it? No. So tomorrow's not looking like this in the boat. Tomorrow's looking from the bank, hoping to see some rattlers, isn't it? Yeah, and then just going out. Out there, looking for yeah. a spot in that zone and dump and run. Yeah. Might, well, might turn up tomorrow morning and just be bouncing like dolphins out there. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? It's, That'd be nice, it's bro. It's fishing, isn't it? What? That's, that's what happens sometimes. I'm a bit scared, I don't mind admitting. <laughs> um, I'm a little bit out of my depth at the moment. Uh, I haven't done this sort of fishing for a, a long time. And when you get out into the vastness of that place out there, um, you realise how small you are. Um, so yeah, loads of weed, you know, some, some amazing big gravelly clear areas to fish to. But it all changes when you see a carp. And if we see carp tomorrow morning, then, then I'll be firing on all cylinders. But at the moment, getting thrown around in that little boat in the waves, it ain't even windy yet. I'm not, I'm not exactly in my element, shall we say. I didn't realise, I knew it was a thousand acres, but having been out in the boat, it really, really does feel big. It feels massive. Um, location is always everything, but you know, on a thousand acres, there's gonna be massive areas of water with no fishing. So there's no point in just chucking the rods out tomorrow. I'm thinking, Really, I was thinking we're going to be looking for them in the boat, but the weather is going to be really rough tomorrow, big waves and stuff like that. So, really, boat, boat locations out the window, you know, really we're going to be looking for them jumping, you know, how we normally do, waterproofs on. Um, and I don't, I don't even think it's worth getting the gear out of the car unless we see something. Down to Daryl, coming Daryl. Hello mate, you alright? Uh, it's a little bit windy isn't it mate? Yeah, it's quite a welcome isn't it? Mate, I didn't envisage this when uh, when I had the, the cunning plan to come here. <laughs> um, but I, I, haven't, I haven't seen anything yet, I'm sort of looking at the mid-section of the lake, so I'm about probably 150 away from you, maybe a little bit more. So I'm looking at the bit that's sort of over your right shoulder, but I've not seen anything out there. What about you? No, mate, I'm not seeing anything either. It's, um, it's obviously a really good day for what you'd say good fishing conditions, but fish spotting conditions, it's, it's not the one, you know. We've just got here, just arrived. We, if, we, if we knew all the spots and knew where they like to be on, in these sort of conditions, you'd be out with the rods immediately. But just standing here, I, I, yeah, I think it's going to be hard work, mate. Yeah, I think I'm going to reposition, sort of leapfrog, go the other side of you, the other side of those two reed islands, because the, the wind's sort of coming across here. It doesn't feel like they would end up getting pushed to this bit. It's almost like they get pushed past it to that sort of margin straight out in front of you that it's banging straight into and beyond. Um, I think I'm going to go down there. I've been looking off the beach area and that as well, you know, from when it got light this morning, not seen or heard anything around here. I think if you, if you stumble across them, I think you'll probably see one quite quickly. I hope so, I don't want to be standing out in the rain all day for nothing. In true Daryl style, he spotted one just after we got off the walkies, but he couldn't be 100% because of the huge waves and how far out it was. 
I got over to him as quickly as I could in these savage conditions, but by the time I arrived, the wind had got up even more, making fish spotting almost impossible. I like that bit round there more, off the back of the wind, up the side of the islands there, that sort of... It's more comfortable. Yeah, but just that that bit where you've got all the ins and outs going into the islands, yeah. where it's all nature reserved, that, you know, and seeing that hat there as well, somebody left their little <laughs> yeah. memento. Yeah. Uh, there's been a carp angler there before. There's definitely been a Let's carp angler. Let's hope he knows more than we do. <laughs> at the moment. At the moment. At the moment. Yeah. I think we just get off the lake for a bit, go and have something to eat. It's supposed to, abs <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to absolutely bucket down as well about four o'clock. Is it? Oh, mate, this is unreal. Yeah, let's get in the warm. Come back this evening. Yeah? Yeah, mate. Yeah, get me out of here. <laughs> After a belly full of Mackie D's, we came back to the lake to find the storm had blown itself out. It was drizzling with rain, but calm enough to have a proper look for spots with the help of the aquascope. We used a combination of specially designed Poseidon markers and old fashioned garden canes to mark the best looking clear areas. Then we gave them all a liberal dousing of boilies and particles with the idea of coming back in the morning and fishing the ones where the bait had been eaten. When there's an out of bounds area on the lake, you can almost guarantee the fish will be in it. So last night, I wanted to find spots that targeted the channels around this area. The first spot was near the mouth of it, a nice clay run that the fish would most certainly pass over. With the second and third spot, I decided to fish a lot closer to the bank. As I'd passed a reed bed, I'd saw something move. I wasn't sure if it was a carp or not, but I decided to put quarter of a bucket of maize and tigers there, just in case. In the morning, when I went to put this rod out, I was surprised with what I saw. All the bait's gone. So I have a carp in the zone. We've been nuisance fished out. Either way, I think we're gonna find out pretty quick. After a lot of moving around, a lot of watching, um, and a lot of seeing nothing yesterday, I'm finally fishing, um, and I am loving it. Um, I haven't used a boat for absolutely ages. Placing rigs is just, uh, you know, if uh, it's not too windy, which it isn't today, you know, there's nothing more accurate than that. And um, the first spot, the closest spot, which is about 150, 180 yards off the bank. Um, I thought I was on clay there, but actually going out again today and looking through the viewing bucket, I could see there was sort of onion weed sort of over virtually all of the bottom. It was only a couple of inches deep, and there were definitely areas that where it had been eaten down and the bottom was starting to be exposed, and, and a lot of the bait was gone. There was still bait there, um, but considering how much I put out before it got dark last night, there wasn't really that much left. Um, so I sprinkled a bit more bait around that close rod, put the rig down, and then the middle rod is the road. It's probably, oh, it's got to be 80 yards long, this gravel road. It's got great big stones on it and, and bits of sort of smoother stuff as well. Um, the bait near the marker pole, interestingly, was still there, but the bait I'd thrown further up the road was gone. Um, there was little bits of bait here and there all over. Notice quite a few of the boilies were gone. Um, and um, there are Poisson char in here, which are the little tiny green catfish, spiny catfish, and they will gnaw your boilie down to nothing in no time at all. So that's why me and Daryl have gone in with tigers on every rod, just to make sure we've got bait on the end for this, this first day. So I threw quite a bit more bait. I went over and over it in, in the boat with a viewing bucket just to see, and there's little areas where it looks like the bottom's been cleaned off. The stones are that bit cleaner, it sort of changed colour. Now that could be a catfish feeding on it, could be a carp, could be a tench. Um, but it's feeding, definitely, and there's nowhere near as much bait there um, as, as what I put out last night. And then the final rod out, out by the sort of out of bounds area by the islands, um, that is going to go. If I had to put my money on one rod going, it's going to be that one. It was slicking up this morning. I put a load of bait around that because there's a great big trough going into the out of bounds, and I'm just on this side of it. The weather's absolutely cock on. Just a nice gentle southerly, makes getting the rods out really nice. Um, overcast, nobody about, full of anticipation. We've been here like this is the third day now. First day out in the boat, second day just standing around in the rain, getting wet and baiting up, and now we're fishing. Um, 
ideally we'd have been on absolute blackness you know we'd have stumbled across a massive shoulder carp and we'd be rubbing our hands together but it hasn't happened like that and uh, that's the the nature of the beast you know you pick a thousand acre lake with unknown stock um, you know you just don't know what you're going to be um, encountered with so yeah I'm I'm apprehensive anxious but between us over these days I would like to think we'd sniff something out you know is that carp over my shoulder in those reeds now is it are they there creeping around you know I don't know I don't know I'm, I'm yeah I'm not an expert <laughs> that's the truth of the matter you know I'm, I'm here and I'm winging it and uh, I'm doing my best and I just hopefully we will find out where those carp are What happened? I don't know. I don't necessarily think it was definitely a carp. Just jammed into the buzzer, picked into it something on the end. I don't even got the lead off the clip. And it's an eight ounce, so you think anything substantial would have shook yeah. that free immediately, you know? That's, that just shouldn't be on there. And it's soon to got to the weed, it just come off, whatever it was. But I reckon it was a nuisance fish of some description. Yeah. Yeah, it just it didn't rip, it just bobbed and jammed into the rods. And it was just. Right. On there like that, you know, rat Oh really? Yeah. It wasn't like mm, I'm in. Oh right, it wasn't okay. Like that. Right. Oh mate, uh, when I saw you lose it, I was like, it was the end of the world. <laughs> no. Um not ideal. There's a carp, there's a carp, there's a carp, there's a carp there. Right, that's changed everything. Come in, Dan, come in. Hello, mate. I have some uh, very good news. Just seen a 110% carp. Yeah, man. Just as I was putting the rod back out after that occurrence, I spotted one from the boat, literally six feet away from my spot. I had changed from a tiger nut hook bait to a bright isotonic pop-up in the hope if there was any other fish in the area, they were just honing on it really quickly. And just a few hours later... Run away. But once again, it just wasn't to be. That's a carp. What's going on with this life jacket? Get it on me. It's gone miles past the reeds. Get him, Paul. To the right, to the right. Still on, definitely still on.
crap himself and I'm not even playing it. Come on, Daryl. Oh, yeah, come on! <laughs> yes! Come on! Get in! Better get it back before it gets too dark, eh? Right. <laughs> He's a happy boy now. C'est bon? It's good. Yeah, boy. A carp. A carp, mate. Yes. A carp. A carp. Well done. Twenty-seven and a half. I've got to go, man. It's going, mate. It's going. It's going. It's going. It sounds mad, but we could have really done without this happening right now. The guard de pêche are notoriously strict, and if we weren't off the lake soon, we could be in trouble here. Got him. Got him. Wow, what an evening. Let's get back to the bank before we get guard de pêche. Although going over 400 metres to collect this little carp wasn't ideal, it did prove, despite how insane this challenge was from the outset, we could definitely catch them here. Looks like catfish bait. <laughs> Not a 400 metre pool carp. When you put tone 400, it needs to be big and. <laughs> so, what a day yesterday. You know, we came here, spent two days looking, um, didn't see any fish, no showing or anything, and then we baited up, and, and yesterday was the first day of fishing. And I had um, two sort of runs. Um, early evening and lost both of them, you know, on contact, picking into the fish. They didn't really pull back, you know, there was no sort of tension on the line and I wasn't sure if it was nuisance fish or, or, or whatever else. But this morning after I've dropped my rigs and I've gone back out and looked at them and the rigs are moving around so that tells me that there are nuisance fish sort of pecking at them and I'm wondering if the, the nuisance fish sort of just pecking around at the rigs making them sort of less effective, you know, they aren't sitting quite as as they should be. Um, moving forward, maybe I'll have to change something, but for today, I've got all three rods on the reeds. Um, it's gonna be warm over the next few days. I'm anticipating the fish coming to them. I've put a bucket of maize and tigers out there, a big bucket, maybe 10 kilos. When I checked this morning, it's all gone. So we know it's a day's only venue. We're expecting the fish to feed in the night, and we know that they are. So it's just a case of getting those rigs back on the spots, keeping the bait chopped up, and we'll be waiting for those final evening hours tonight. In stark contrast to Daryl, my spots have been really quiet so far. And as usual, I'm following his lead by swapping one rod onto an IB pop-up soaked in isotonic. After looking with the scope, the bait isn't being eaten off my closest spot. So I've moved that rod out super long so I've got two rigs close to the mouth of the outer bounds. Now I can fish tigers on one rod and a pop-up on the other to increase my chances of a take. The third rod is staying on that mega looking gravel road as some bait is being eaten from that spot. I still don't know if it's carp clearing the bait because I haven't seen a single fish show or seen one from the boat, but judging from what's pestering Daryl, it may not be. Bit of roach! <laughs> okay, it's a roach. Okay, it's the end of the second full day's fishing and uh, no carp today. Um, I've had two more of these rud hybrid things. Going back to the day before, I think, I think that's that, those are the ones I lost. You know, I don't actually think I've lost any carp now. I think it's them, I think the maize and the tigers has been the um, catalyst for bringing them to the spot. So moving forward tonight, um, I'm gonna go in with straight boilies. And I know they're not quite as attractive as the maize and tigers are instantly, but if we're gonna be sitting here behind rods, especially long distance rods, there's no way I can be um, catching these rud hybrid things all the time. You know, we're gonna have to put boilies out, hope that the carp come, and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there tomorrow. Been a pretty quiet day today on the fish front. Um, 
basically due to the weather. It's changed completely from the first day we were here. Um, almost flat calm for most of the day. One plus point, we did see a few fish out in open water milling about. A lot of fish are in the reserve. One of our crew went round there and you could see them bow roving around on the surface there. Um, you know, Daryl was worried about that before we came and he's dead right. You know, the ones they've seen are probably 400 yards away from where we can put our closest baits. Um, and that coupled with the fact that we're day fishing only as well um, does make it very difficult. But we live in hope. Um, I'm going to put a lot more bait out tonight, mainly boily. Daryl's been played with small fish again today. So 18 mil pop-ups on in the morning. No baits going in the swim tomorrow morning at all. Just three hook baits in the hope that I'm now one of the stragglers. If we put a load of boily out tonight, spread it right out. Hopefully some fish will still be in the area in the morning and we might get a quick chance. So um, a frustrating day, but there's always tomorrow. After a bit of a powwow back at the Jeet, we agreed that going back on spots that weren't producing was wasting time that we simply didn't have. With it set to be flat calm in the morning, we agreed to just look and not fish until we'd seen something concrete. Daryl would start in his old swim by the reeds and I would head down the far end, concentrating my attention on the general zone where a couple of fish had been spotted on the drone the afternoon before. Dan, come in, come in Dan. Yeah. Dan, receive you, mate. Go ahead. Um, I started down in um, the original swim in that reed swim, looking back up the length of the lake and real at long range, I saw some sort of unexplained ripples. I got my binoculars out, couldn't see any um, grebe. So I've come up here for a look um, in the space of, I don't know, not even 10 minutes. So I've seen, I've just, oh no, that's definitely, it. I've just seen another one. Um, there's definitely some fish here, mate, a hundred percent. That is wicked news, mate. Where, whereabouts are you exactly? Um, I don't know what you'd call it. We called it Heron Point. It's quite a, it's a big point that sort of juts out of a dead tree on it. It's got to be, I don't know, 800 metres up from where we were. Well, yeah, good news on all, all fronts at the moment, mate. One's been seen out here. I didn't see it. One of the crew saw it with their eagle eyes. But, um, yeah, definitely, definitely a carp. Um, and out where... Um, we, um, we might have seen them, I think, yesterday on the drone. I wasn't round with the drone when they were getting the shots, but they did see some fish out here. Yeah, that's um, very encouraging. Yes, mate, I really don't know what to do. It's sort of, some of them, well, a lot of them are in, within casting range. I don't know if to quickly go back to the car and try and sling at them or just let them be and locate where they're sort of happy to be and then try and do it a bit more properly this afternoon. Yeah, mate, that's what I'm going to do. Um, we're, we're just, I'm not going out in the boat, just seeing if we can get a lock on another one. We've got them pretty much sorted out where they are. Um, but the thing is, you can cast and you can just be in, in that, like, sort of, that tall stalk sort of weed that's three foot off the bottom and you're not even fishing, so. I think you need to go out in the boat and, and place it on something where the rig's fishing. Yeah, roger that. I'll probably then, I, re I reckon the plan will be just hold fire, try and get a proper lock on and what they are, what they're doing, and um, leave it till this afternoon, just until the sun, well, until it's bright enough to see the spots and try and get out as minimally as possible. I kept watching, as did Dan, but the longer I was there, it became clear there was more fish further along. Continuing to walk and look, I stumbled across a large group of jumping fish. That was a fish, wasn't it? This was definitely the most activity I'd seen since I'd been here, so I got my gear and went out to place the rig straight away. Unfortunately, whilst out in the boat, I couldn't find any clean areas where the fish were. I was forced to drop shore in order to find presentable ground. Um, Captain Disaster to the Pecanator. Captain Disaster to the Pecanator. Come in, mate, you're right. No, brother, I'm not all right at all. Gets them out lovely and sweet with the help of the crew. Next to no wind. Found two lovely spots out where they're showing. Absolutely banging. Decides to have a little nap. Wakes up from nap with two rods going at the same time 
and two belly boat pike anglers over the top of my lines. One manages to get free, the other one has got it tangled round his spinner, himself and his flipper. Flipping out. Yeah, then about half an hour later... Two of our lovely French canoeist friends have come through. Um, one has picked up my left hand bamboo pole and launched it like a javelin about 30 yards from where he's picked it up from. Right, I'm thinking that surely that wasn't, that didn't just happen, right? So I'm looking for my pole with my binoculars, can't see it, one of the crew finds it, and sure enough, it's 50 yards away from where it was originally. 50 yards, he wants to be in the Olympics, doesn't he? So goes out in the boat, picks it up, comes back to shore, cuts my left hand rod in, and off about two rod lengths from the bank, right? Did, 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 drop back. So now the rig's out there with 250 yards of braid and the spool's half empty. Yeah, it's getting pretty so horrendous, that, mate. Right, so I've then gone out in the boat with the, with the viewfinder and, and the cane that I've got to try and find my spot again, and they're directing me off the bank. And then eventually I've come across the spot, right? Drop the cane down. And then, I, God knows how, but I have managed to spot the rig which is still in, in position, hasn't moved at all. And now, now I've got to manhandle 200 or more metres of braid into the boat. So I would get all the braid and everything in the boat, mass success, all right, I've got a re-spool, but I haven't left a live rig out in the lake. So well pleased with that. So I've then had to re-spool 600 metres of braid on, onto that spool. As I'm going out there, the rod must have been resting on the both terminals of the battery. As I pick the rod up, I've got a massive electric shock. The rod's not even touching the battery anymore. I'm standing up in the boat, I held the rod in one hand, put my hand on the rod, and just got the most massive whack off of this rod. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. So from this morning when it looked absolutely on from a bite to three hours of a mass disaster. Mate, honestly, if we weren't filming, I'd go home. It's that bad. Last time we were here, when we came for a look around, um, Carpy Kev, our cameraman, picked up this stone and gave it to me on the way home um, as a good luck memento. And I'm starting to think this little guy is not very lucky at all. So I'm sorry, Kev, but I'm returning the stone to the lake. There you go. It's going down there. We've given it back. Okay, stop hurting me. I had spotted not just one, but a group of fish much further down the bank. It was looking like a complete write off here, so I grabbed everything and moved on to them. I didn't want to waste any time looking for spots in the boat, so I just moved the bead up the leg core and chucked out spinners to where they were. Got take. And guess what? It worked. Right, quick, 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 no messing around. Where's this life jacket? Right, this is a proper carp. I'm praying there's no snags out here. I hope there's no snags. It's fair to say that neither of us has the experience to be out in the boat as quickly as the seasoned European anglers who use boats all the time. This delay gave the fish loads of time to bury itself in a weed bed. And the only thing you can do in this situation is get above it and apply steady pressure. Thank God Daryl had 20 pound line on. It was finally free and this fish looked absolutely massive. Oh my God. Yes! Come on! Yes! He's got it! Come on! <laughs> yes! Yes! That's it! That's doing it! Yes! Yeah, boy!
<laughs> what a mess in here. I hadn't even taken the gear out. Oh. How about that, eh? How about that? On his way back to base. Daniel, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brother, I'm here. Go on. Um, I think it's a 50. Um, I can't tell. Really, really wide. Quite long, not very deep, like a absolute bruise of a male. Yeah, man, you are a hero, brother. That is a solid, solid bit of angling. Um, richly deserved, mate, richly deserved. Give me the life jacket! Where is it? Where is it? Give me the life jacket now! I'm freaking out! <laughs> it's just over 53, you're right. You can reach out, well done. <laughs> I'll make you bruise. <laughs> You saw you come. <laughs> it's good, mate. It's Brilliant, good. Mate. Fight was insane. Really? How big is it? 53. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, a proper one. Well, today has definitely been the best day, and not just because I've caught the big one, you know. It's been um, a very active day and a very sort of interesting day. You know, first thing this morning, it was like a mill pond. Uh, and I love mornings like that, you know, you can see so much water and so much easier to spot any disturbances. And uh, by going into that reed swim this morning and sort of holding the fire as such, and not rushing the kit out, um, saw the activity further up the lake. And I made a mistake initially by going out in the boat looking for spots. What I should have done is chuck choddies out there or, or spinner rigs with the bee pushed up the leg core. That's what I should have done with my opening gambit. Torture with the pike anglers, absolute nightmares that may fluff on my line. And at that point, I was almost given up. I'd given up on the day, you know. I'd seen all those fish, but because of all the disasters, I'd given up and I was thinking, we'll roll on tomorrow morning, we'll start afresh somewhere else. And uh, I'd just picked that may fluff off my line and I saw one show and it was further down the lake, maybe. I don't know, maybe 800 yards further down the bank. I was walking towards the nearest point to, to look, to see if any more showed. And another one showed when I was walking down. And then one showed when I was there. And at that point, I could see where it was. It was sort of 100 yards, 90 to 110 yards towards a corner of an island um, in the distance. And uh, whacked a couple of uh, pink pop-ups out there. And, you know, second rod was only out there 10 minutes. And it was off. And I don't know how much line I've got on my wheels. I think I've got... I think you probably get about 170 to 20 pound carp line on there. After the cast and the, the initial run, and when we hopped in the boat, I could already see the bazier right in from the bottom of the spool. And I'm thinking, oh my God, is it a carp? Is it a catfish? Um, when we got to it, it was weeded up solid, like really badly weeded. And you're thinking, just please don't come off, you know, really having to put, it was windy, you know, the boat's adding force. I was really having to use the engine to get above the fish and really exert some force trying to lift it out. And when it came out, all oh, hell broke loose, you know. Um, and to be honest, if nothing else happens in this session, then I'll be over the moon, you know. But if you'd ask me before we come here, would you take a 50 pounder every day of the week? You know, 50 pounder from a 900, 1,000 acre lake that you've never seen before, um, with no information, you've come here completely blind, hunted them down, you know, that is a mega, mega result. I think we're, we're, we're fine tuning it, you know, we're, we're, we're finding fish now and that is the key to catching them, you know, we're, we're on them, I don't think anybody else is aware that they're down this end of the lake, so tomorrow morning we'll be down there looking first thing, um, no pre-baiting going on, just literally looking and I'll be casting those pink pop-ups straight at any activity. Mine and Daryl's angling days couldn't really have been more different, um, I don't mind admitting I'm absolutely beaten at the moment. Um, all the getting up early and the logistics of getting into the swims and uh, you know pumping a boat up and everything else is proper taxing on the body and I am feeling it today. Um, you know I've had a nightmare with all the things that have gone wrong. Uh, you know people picking up my lines, moving my markers, all that sort of thing, cutting myself off um, and having to re-spool 600 metres of braid. Um, 
And in stark contrast, Daryl's obviously fished like a hero, as he always does, moved and moved again, followed his instincts, cast at him and caught one. Um, and an amazing fish as well. So um, tomorrow morning, I'm just gonna look, I'm not gonna start fishing. I will put some bait in tonight on my long area, because it did. there were definitely fish out there this morning. And we're seeing them show now, which is a major, major change. So that's definitely something to go on. Um, but for now, um, some more sleep is needed and uh, regroup in the morning. Oh my God, it's f***ing ridiculous out there. Well, I didn't want to set up around there um, just for the sake of it. Oh, there's another one out there now. And they're booming out, and another one, and another one. Um, they are booming out in front of here, just one after the other, and another one. This, um, this cooler weather has definitely turned them on. Daryl's seen them in front of him as well. Um, I'm just going to fire three singles out amongst them and see if I can get a bite. It is absolute blackness down there, man. It's a bloody dolphin show. It's absolutely insane. There must be loads of them out there. Moving on the wind like a pack of locusts, devouring everything in their path. By the look of all them fish down there and how quickly he's hooked one, he is on for an absolute Toby Carvery today. In all the excitement and rush to get the rods out, I hadn't pumped the boat up, so I did my best to play it back from the bank. But three quarters of the way in, it went absolutely solid. What about if Daryl comes down in his boat? Why don't you radio through to Daryl to come down in his boat? We've got more chance of two of us together getting it in. So the crew radioed in and Daryl was quickly round to help me get above the fish. Yeah. The fish was absolutely stuck solid and no amount of pulling from any angle made any headway. In the end I passed the rod to Daryl so I could apply more pressure by hand lining. But all I got was an open hook and a sliver of rope, probably from an old marker boy. To lose the first one after so many long days so many disasters and so much effort almost broke me. I had to properly push myself to carry on and in spite of feeling totally gutted, I did get the rods back out. My perseverance paid off and it wasn't long before the same rod was away again. This time, with the boat pumped up and ready, and with me now living with the life jacket on, I was quickly out and racing towards the fish. At the start of the battle, the movement of the boat hides any real movement from the fish, and to begin with, you really don't know if it's still on or not. It's only when you get over the top of it that the battle really begins. In spite of me being super quick, it had still run a long way past the spot, and after what seemed like an eternity of it lunging for the weed below the boat, it was mine. Yes! Yes! This feeling of total elation is the reason we all go fishing. Go on, my son. And after all the disasters, that feeling was as strong as I'd ever felt it. If you'd asked me 10 minutes ago, um, do you want to go home? I would have said, yeah, if it was meant no consequences, I would have gone home. I felt that bad. It was probably the lowest point in my angling career ever. Um, I was utterly, utterly broken, utterly broken. Um, didn't know what hook to put on next. Didn't even want to cast out. They just didn't want to do anything. Didn't want to drink a cup of tea. All I can liken it to, it's, it's just like being dumped, you know? 
like your missus just rings up and goes, that's it, don't love you anymore, see you later. That is the feeling, like afterwards, when it sinks in, what has happened, it just, I know it's only a cart, but after all that effort and everything, it, 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 it meant so much. So to get another bite, and now have the boat in operation, which I should have done at the start. That is my major mistake. You know, you'll put things down to bad luck, but it wasn't bad luck. If I'd had the boat pumped up, I would have gone out in the boat to that fish and I would have landed it. Um, and that was my, my fault, you know, and I was just absolutely killing myself because of that. Yeah, you can imagine how I felt when I was out there playing it and then when it finally went in the net. There's actually a massive bush in the water out by those boys and I think the fish had taken so much line off me at the start, I think it actually got in there. Um, as I got out to it, I think it just pinged off the bush. It's like a huge, you know, three times the size of a bivy bush out by them boys. Um, and that's probably one of the reasons they're out there. Uh, so I'm gonna have to be very careful, um, you know, if I get any more bites um, to try and keep them out of that. But it's a, an amazing looking 30 plus common. If it was 20 pound, or 80 pound, I'd feel exactly the same. Yeah, man. That is, without any shadow of a doubt, the hardest earned carp I've ever caught. What an epic, epic journey to this point. There's been so much planning involved, so much effort, so much moving, so much tackle to ferry around. The crew and everything have just been absolutely exemplary. We couldn't have done it without them, we really couldn't have done. And um, you know, to go from absolute disaster yesterday, getting wiped out by the pike anglers, moving my markers, cutting my own line, um, and then this morning, to lose that fish this morning, after all that effort, um, you know, I could not have been more down. Uh, and now, um, I have to say, I am super, super up. After such a high, the come down was really harsh. I'd lost another one and I had to figure out why. Absolute disaster. After losing that fish, I just had to investigate what was going on out there. I felt it brushing the tree out there before I even got in the boat. So chances are it was snagged up before I even went out there. The line just snapped. I got over the top of the tree, spent ages round there, which obviously is no good for the spot whatsoever. It's probably spooking everything away. So I thought I was just going to wind the other rod in and um, get out in the boat, pick up the other canes, which are on other spots at this end of the lake, mark where the tree is, um, and also take the rangefinder out of me in the boat, that's what the golfers use, and mark how far from the bank the tree is, um, which I've done. Dropped a cane into the tree, the water was so deep the cane just disappeared, um, so I've lost the cane. Um, so I've rangefinded it and the tree's about 150 yards from the bank and there was no way, even with my bigger rods, in this crosswind I was hitting anything like 150 yards. So I've got the old distance sticks out. Before I wound the rod in, I clipped it up um, wound it in, went round the sticks once I got back to the bank and it's about 120 yards just shy of. Um, so I'm dropping sort of 25 to 30 yards short of where the tree is but because I left the rod so long getting the life jacket on it's taken that much line that it's got in there. So now basically what I've got to do is not let the fish run. So I've tightened the clutches right up, put the rods both back out again um, I'm not going around the distance sticks and hitting the clip. With the crosswind we've got here, you know, it's going to drag it back towards me so much. Um, I'm just basically blasting it as far as I can, catching it just before it hits the water, plunging the rod tip into the water upwind to try and correct the line as much as possible. Um, and I'm standing upwind of where my rods are going to be when I'm casting as well to help with that as well. I want the straightest line possible. Just don't know what's out there, you know. I've got to get in the boat to land them but I can't let them run when they're out there. So it's going to have to be a massive tug of war. Um, hope that I can stop them in them first 20 or 30 yards, turn them, get them halfway back in, 
um, and then go out in the boat and try and land them like that. I've just got two singles out there, um, the IB pop-ups with the isotonic goo on top of them, helicopter rig as we always use, boom hook link, size two hook, um, and um, we'll see how it goes. But it's, you know, this fishing is testing me to the absolute limit. Thank God I caught one this morning, because if I hadn't, I'd be hanging myself. With so much activity in Dan's swim, I really wasn't expecting a bite today. I'm gonna be stranded to around here. Almost totally out of the blue, I was in. Big fish, probably big fish. Yeah. Let's go. Oh. Right, my line's out here, right? Oh, right. Here you are. Look at this. What's that? What's the other line? Yeah. Okay, it's gone. Yeah. Clear? Yeah. It can't be stressed enough how much ag every fish is to land here. There are so many elements against us, the whole job just becomes infinitely harder. Let's go there. It just crossed me out. textbook netting but that's another good fish all that flapping around about a few rudd at the start and now we're just churning out carp well, how's about that for a battle scarred common we arrived this morning first light obviously I was keen to get back in the same area where I caught from yesterday the first few shows I saw were much shorter, so I placed the rods there, and um, to be honest, I wasn't overly confident, because loads of fish started showing in front of Dan, and I didn't think there was many around, but ripped off, middle of the late morning, and uh, epic boat battle, absolutely over the moon with this, and looking forward, I think today is gonna be a very good day. What is going on? This is a trailer of some description. There was, there's a fish on this. I can feel you not nine biting touching my lot. There's, there's definitely a fish on this rod. I'll tell you exactly what happened there. He's kited right, yeah, it looks like a 40. He's kited right and gone straight through that other line. That's why they've both started going, but I've caught it. Wow. <laughs> Hoorah, indeed. Check that out. <laughs> 41 pounds, 12 ounces. Sometimes when your name's on it, you can do no wrong. This one was absolutely nailed through the bottom lip on that spinner rig with a prototype hook. And that's the reason I landed it, to be honest. It had gone through the other line. Both bobbins are going up and down. I thought it was a trailer. And I managed to pick up the right rod and let our cameraman Kev slacken off on the other rod and went out in the boat and finally got him in. I could just see him on the top, just gobbing out water, caught up in the other line, and in the net it went. Um, just a crazy, crazy set of events. I knew it was going to be a good day. It just goes to show, no matter how big the lake is, if you're on them, they're easy enough to catch. <laughs> we are on them now. Here he is, carp number two. Came on the same rod, short, maybe 40 yards out to the left. There's a set of snags out there and I saw one show sort of halfway towards them this morning. And this one completely out of the blue, see nothing else has ripped off. Single squid goo, doing the do as it always does. Great tactic at this time of year and a great result so far. So I want to talk a little bit about my rigs for this situation. Obviously it's a new lake, I know next to nothing about it. 
Um, and in that situation, I haven't got time to go around in the boat and look at all the areas, you know. I've, got, I've only got time to look for fish. So the first thing I'm doing is looking for fish. When I found the fish, I want to cast to the fish. And uh, in that situation, I need a rig that's going to present over most terrains, you know. I'm not looking for spots. I literally want to be able to put my rig where that fish has jumped and, and present the bait in a way where the fish can see it. If the fish can see it, then they have the option to take it. So my version of the, the spinner rig or the Ronnie rig as such, I'm fishing it much like a chod rig. So I've got the bead on the leg core leader pushed up, I don't know, two feet, two feet up the leader. So halfway up a four foot leader um, to allow to present over low lying weed, maybe a little bit of bottom debris. And with that bead pushed up the leg core leader, as the lead descends, the rig is pushed back up the, up the leader to the top, top bead. And it should, all being well, come to rest on top of the weed, leaving the pop-up sitting proud. Now the hooking arrangement I use is um, maybe a little bit different to most people's. Um, I use the hybrid stiff material and I fish that five, five and a half inches long and I crimp it. You know, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer, in, you can't crimp most coated braids, but this, this particular one does take to crimping. And when you steam that hybrid stiff with the crimps on it, it is a thing of absolute beauty. It's minimal, it's sleek, it's strong. You know, it's a 20 pound breaking strain product, but when crimped on the machines at work, they've had it over 30 pounds. So it is really, really strong. Um, on the end of that, the thing that makes a spinner rig a spinner rig is the spinner swivel. And um, I'm using a kicker, a cut down large one. So I take a little bit off, maybe two or three mil off the end, slide that over the eye, put it onto the, onto the quick change swivel. A lot of people use the spinner rig with, um, a curve shanked or a sweeping shanked hook um, and catch really well on it. But I don't really like that pattern of hook personally. I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of wide gapes and choddies. They're pretty much the same hook, you know, wide gapes and choddies. One's got a downturned eye and one's got a back turned eye. Um, and I've been using the wide gapes since 2003, 2004. Um, and I've just got so much confidence I don't like to change certain things like that. These days I'm using the, the Wygate X versions, which are the extra thick wire. Um, and in this situation, fishing for really big carp, you'd probably expect me to be using a four or a two. You know, I know Dan, Dan loves big hooks. He uses fours and twos all the time. But I'm a, I, I love the size six. Um, I've caught loads of fish on it. And the, the one thing that you'll notice when you use a wide gape on, on the spinner rig as opposed to a curved shank hook is if you put the, the, the top bead where the, the micro swivel sort of moves up and down in the same place, it's not as aggressive. Um, and that's why most people probably wouldn't go for that pattern. But I've experimented with it and I've put the bead onto the bend, you know, probably a quarter of the way round, just past the shank, just onto the bend. And it seems to, to flip more aggressively in that way. And, the, and another thing and sort of side effect of doing that is when you chuck it into the edge and you look at it, you actually can't see the hook. The hook is completely under the bait, completely out of sight. And uh, the hook holds I've been getting while using that are absolutely amazing. And yes, yeah, it's, it's a confidence thing. You know, I've caught loads of fish on those hooks in the past. It's working really well for me. And I've had some amazing boat battles out there in the thick weed, particularly the 53 pounder. If you see that, you'll see the, the footage where the rod is absolutely hooped. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm exerting serious force to keep the fish out of the weed. Um, and these hooks in these fish's mouth are not moving. They're just straight in, like not plumb center every time, but maybe slightly off to the side, but they are quite far back and they are not sliding. They're holding true. And that's all you can ask for in this situation. Good. It had been a crazy day, five bites and only two landed. So when the rod roared off for the sixth time, I was crapping myself that the tackle would fail me again. On these extreme waters, you have to learn from the mistakes you've made and adapt as quickly as possible to get the balance of tackle and tactics just right. Earlier in the day, I'd lost a fish almost immediately as the leader knot snapped in the middle of another tug of war. Oh, it's come off. I had to remove this weak spot from my kit, so I switched to 20 pound touchdown straight through and was amazed to find I could still hit the clip at 30 wraps, even in a horrendous crosswind. The stretch in the mono took the ferocity out the initial run, 
giving me the time to bring the fish back away from the sunken tree. Only then could I dare to get to the boat and get above the fish as quickly as possible to keep it away from the snags that littered the area between the hot spot and the bank. I love it when a plan comes together. Swap to mono, play it hard at the start, don't let it get in the trees, don't get snapped up, go out in the boat, epic battle, beautiful, beautiful common carp. It looks to me at least a mid 40, at least. God. It's a 50, get in! 50 pounds, 8 ounces. Come on! Yes! Oh, yes. Yeah, look at that. That is what I came to this lake for. A 50 pound carp. 50 pound, 8 ounces of absolute common carp perfection. And changing over to that 20 pound touchdown straight through gave an epic battle, it didn't get in the trees, it didn't weed me up and uh, got out in the boat when I knew it was away from danger, had an epic, epic battle with this creature and it's now mine, yes, get in. Thank you my darling, off you go. Nice to meet you. Yeah, man. Yes! Get in. Uh, windy point to um, dark side of the moon. Windy point to dark side of the moon. Come in. Hello, mate. What's happening? Not a lot, brother. Getting blown to pieces here, but it's, um, it's gone proper northerly now. So it's sort of just um, sort of a little bit more off my back, which is, which is making the casting a little bit easier today. Roger that. What happened with uh, the crew boat? I see you uh, have to go for going after it. I'm just in the process of stealthily baiting up with a throwing stick from the bank, putting loads of effort in, and the crew boat has ended up drifting right over the top of the spot and I've had to go and retrieve it. So um, no stealth going on there. Are the crew carp anglers? The crew are carp anglers, mate, yes. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> um, I've had a couple of rowers doing laps around my spot, um, to be honest, and then to whoever's trying to G them up, like give them some uh, encouragement with petrol engine roaring over the spots, and I ain't seen nothing. I think they're gone. I feel it touching fronds of weed out there. Just want to get it away from this tree, and then. Uh, Get out in the boat. Oh, pulling me in. Someone push me out. Someone push me out. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it.
you not next. Cheers, brother. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Mission accomplished! <laughs> Is 60, 63 and a half. Yeah, 63 and a half. Get in! Oh. Are you ready for this? Yeah! This is why we came to this lake. Endured all the rubbish from the locals, all the rumour, all the grief, all the boating, all the getting cut off, all the pike anglers, everything. All the getting up early, all the going to bed late all the disasters to this success. Just absolutely awesome. 63 and a half pounds of public water common carp. Probably one of the best carp I've ever, ever caught. Awesome. Yes. Above it, really, push some cans. It done. Yeah, push that out, mate. Go for it, done, yeah. Going in the net. Here's in the net. Yes! What a day! What a day! Get him! Bigger than it looks. It's definitely a 40. It is a 48 pound 6 ounces. Yes! Oh! Check this guy out. An amazing, amazing 48 pound mirror carp. An epic end to an epic day. Lots of time waiting, doing nothing. We didn't think they were here. Not many shows at all, just one this morning. And uh, then that massive, massive common came along and this guy followed it up. And I am so, so pleased to catch it. I'm gonna put two or three key over that spot, put the marker float out, traditional English style, go out in the boat, spread some bait all around it and hope there's loads of these fellas waiting for me when I get back in the morning. Wicked. Mwah. Thank you, my darling. Off you go to get bigger. Wow. Mm. 
Dan has absolutely smashed it the last couple of days. He's had a 30, he's had a 40, a 50, and that insane 60 backed up with a 48 pounder just as the sun went down. But for me, it's been quiet, and that's not through lack of trying. Hello mate, you there? Yes mate, go ahead. I um, started off in uh, the swim that I caught that 50 from, and those those two uh, smaller ones and I whacked out my rod sort of where I'd caught and just as I was about to put the, the third rod out I'd see one directly behind that sort of snag bush that's in my swim probably I don't know at least 150 meters from where I was stood um, but I couldn't cast to it because because those snags were in the way so I've moved down to the next gap that's probably I don't know 80 meters further down and gives me a sort of straight line to the zone but I'm obviously guessing where it was from here. I've used that distance pinner app and done it as best I could, but it, it is a bit guessworky. Mate, that's all good. I wonder um, if they've um, found that bait that you put out yesterday. Well, the show was a good 100 metres left of that. OK, so have they, have they backed up off the wind in between us then? Well, I don't know, you know, I don't know if that's the tip of the iceberg or that's just a single carp. Um, jury's out, but I'm much more confident having seen something. When it's not happening, I'm not content just to sit in one spot. But after moving on to that show this morning and not seeing anything since, I was getting itchy feet again. Bite out of the blue and I started feeling much better about the move. No. It's weird. There's nothing on there. Unfortunately, it was gone, but it was a sign that there was fish about. Grab, grab, quick, quick. Got it? Oh, watch the camera for a sec, watch the camera, over your head. For sake. Get in there. <laughs> Bloody hell, <laughs> what a drama. Finally, it's happening for me. <laughs> Mate, it's only been a day when you ain't caught anything. A day's too long, mate. I was down, I was down. You catching too many, I'm just sitting here just spectating. <laughs> Go on then, brother, what, what occurred? Um, I left a rod where I started this morning, it's sort of 40 metres up the bank because obviously that's the rod where I caught the 50 before, um, sort of long out to the right hand corner of the island from that peg. But I can't, they've got that set of snags, so I can't cast to that spot from where I am, so I've had to leave the rod up there. Right, and that, that was the rod that went, was it? Yeah, yeah, obviously I put a bit of bait out there yesterday, that's interesting. Oh, hello. Oi. Yeah. Wah. Check that out. 41 pound common. Nice to be catching again. And uh, renewed confidence in the swim. Wind busting down here. Same spot that I caught the 53 from. And I've seen a fish, so yeah. This is a great start to the day and I'm still hopeful for another this evening. The wind has dropped considerably today. Uh, the rods went out really well and uh, took a few casts and I was probably um, trying to be a bit more accurate than I need to be. 
Uh, spread bait all over the spot last night and uh, this morning I've got that same rig out there as has done the business for me over the last few days and the technology has changed significantly from, from when I'm going out in the boat and dropping the rigs from the boat. There I was using an 8 ounce cog lead which is as spiteful as you can possibly get um, tubing on it to just to stop any risk of any tangles you're dropping it over the side of the boat um, and then a boom hook link 8 inches long a size 2 long shank X and generally a bottom bait um, so either you know half a 20 miller with a half a pop up on top of it three tiger nuts in a stack you know on a soft hair um, right up the top of a, a long shank X in this situation where I'm casting, obviously I'm going over to something that is going to go a long way and he's not going to tangle. There's no way I'm going to get an eight ounce cog out there casting it. So I've gone back over to a standard sort of setup that we use in our English fishing, which is a helicopter rig incorporating the cable lead core, about sort of three foot long. If you use a really long length of it, it casts like a pig, um, you know, and uh, you just don't need it. All I want is enough space so I can set the no trace speed probably two foot away from the lead so if it does go into any of that onion weed out there the hook link's sliding up away from it the lead's plummeting in and I'm still presented and where it's been so windy I'm not casting in the same place twice I'm not clipping up um, I have put line markers on the rods now so I know roughly the distance that I'm going but I'm, like I am in my English fishing I'm just feeling for the drop of the lead and if it cracks down then either on a clear spot or, or in a bit of low lying weed and I know it's presented so in that situation, I've got a pop-up on um, because, you know, I don't know what it's landing on. Um, a boom hook link again, five to six inches long, 25 or 35 pound of fine, because in this situation, you've got much, much bigger fish. I'm using bigger hooks uh, and you can get away with heavier hook links. And as you've seen, the battles I've had have been absolutely ridiculous. Um, and um, thank God I've got really, really strong kit on. So I've been using a size 2 hook with a pop-up, which you know is a, is a huge hook really to be standing up off the bottom. But these big water fish, one, I don't think they get fished for like this. Um, and two, I think when they turn up on food, or you know, I'll find a bit of food, I think they just eat it. It's not like they're super finicky like you get with small water fish. You know, so I'm just employing something so the hook, you know, the point of the hook is a fair way up off the bottom. I've got a 15mm IB pop-up on there, which is super, super buoyant. I'm actually having to push a little tiny bit of lead wire into that so I don't end up with a load of putty underneath the hook. The hook link itself is crimped at either end. With the 35, you have to use the bigger crimps, uh, the 0.7s. The 25, use the 0.6s. And it's really important with the crimping that you basically line it up. It's a double barrel crimp. You line it up in the crimping tool, pull it up nice and tight um, up to the swivel at either end, um, and then crimp it down so everything's nicely in line. And you're not flattening the crimp, you're just compressing it. Uh, and if you take it out of the crimp tool and there's a little flat bit and it doesn't look like it's done it properly, just do it again. But the, the crimp just underneath the hook is of the ideal place to put the putty. Just roll that round in my fingers, get it a nice shape. And if you drop the putty in the water for a couple of minutes, it will cool it down and it will stiffen slightly and it will stay on better. So the hooks I've been using in this situation, they're a prototype hook which is probably not going to come out because I'm not 100% happy with them. But I basically designed them to be a cross between a curved shank and a wide gape. Um, with a little bit longer, more sweeping shank. I actually interned the eye so much, I tried to recreate what my wide gapes looked like with a bit of shrink tube on, but it was actually too much. And um, we drew up the hooks at work, sat there with Mick, one of our CAD designers, and um, drew it up on paper and it looked right. Um, and they take about a year to come through and you have to pay a, a dollar per hook. So I had a thousand twos and a thousand fours, so that was $2,000 for those hooks, but I wanted to actually use them in a fishing situation. And I used them a couple of years ago um, on the approaching the new water master class. And um, I thought they were gonna cure hook pulls completely with the intern point and the heavily sort of sweeping shank, almost like a bit of shrink tube on it. I thought it was gonna flip over absolutely every time and I'd never get a hook pull. I did unfortunately lose a couple of fish on them in that situation. I had some absolutely banging hook holds as well. And those of you that have got a very keen eye probably would have seen that hook 
in that master class. And really I've gone back over to it here because the first fish I hooked here was on a size two curve, which is another hook I've caught loads of fish on, on foreign waters, fishing with 15 mil pop-ups. Um, but it had got round a rope and the, the hook had opened up because everything was locked up solid. The fish was probably shaking its head like that, trying to get away and it's opened the hook up. But I wanted to put a heavier wire hook on and the only one I had with a slightly longer shank was this pattern. So I put it on and um, you know, basically every fish that I've landed has been absolutely nailed. The ones I've lost have snagged me up. You know, I haven't, I haven't had any hook pulls. Um, so I've carried on with it basically. And it, you know, it looks like a really big hook you know, under a fairly small bait, um, but I'm getting bites on it. And like I say, I think the fish here are not that fussy um, and you want something nice and strong. I'm, I'm down to my last size two at the moment. Um, so basically, if, um, if I get another bite on a size two, I've got to either go down to the size fours in that same pattern or over to a wide gape X, which I'll be more than happy to use. It's a tug of war. I've got a pull like mad in the early part of the fight. If they get in that tree, they've done me. I've lost them. I don't like sharpened hooks in that situation because I think they can cut their way out. Um, you really got to think about the situation in front of you. If you are pulling out a fish, then go back to a standard sharp hook straight out of the packet. Um, you know, and if it's not so weedy, not so mental, then you can get away with a sharpened hook. But basically, that is the technology that is getting the bites. I'm dumping the lead as well off of the heli safe. You know, with such huge fish in such weedy conditions, you know, you need to be losing the lead. And the same thing happens if I'm using a cog lead. I'll be dumping that eight ounce cog lead as well. So, you know, I'm adjusting things around to suit the situation. It's lovely from my point of view to now be fishing from the bank and to be casting. That's my forte. And I think this shows wherever we go around the world, me and Daryl end up employing these sort of tactics and they seem to work everywhere. A disappointing day today for me. Um, nothing's occurred at all. That bait that I put out last night obviously hasn't made any difference. In fact, you could have done some harm. The problem with that is you never know if anything's left in the morning, so they might have cleared me out, and if I'd put more bait in today, like I did in the middle of the day yesterday, I might have got bites, but that's certainly what I'll be doing tomorrow. I'm gonna to start, I'm gonna put three rods out tomorrow rather than two, spread them right out over the area. Don't put any bait in to begin with, um, you know, just in case that bait I put in last night is still there. And then halfway through the day, I'm just gonna put some baits out with a throwing stick and just replicate what happened yesterday, um, you know, because that inspired a couple of bites yesterday evening. So I've tried to match the hatch, a, a link pop up with some squid goo on it. That hasn't worked either. So I'm just gonna go back to three isotonics uh, on them little spinner rigs on helicopters and just see if we can eke out one more bite before the end of the session. Let's hope it's a big one. Right, take us out to it then. Quick as you can. That tree's out here somewhere. Right, that's it. Slow down, slow down. Slow down, slow down. Just here. Got him! Oh, get him! Yes! Get him! On the match the hatch hook bait. Get it in my mouth. Oh. Boom! How about that? for leaving it till the last minute. 10 minutes ago, I'm saying it's been a really quiet day and now I'm holding this amazing creature. 42 and a half pounds, left me a proper merry dance. Really, really epic fight at the start. Managed to get him away from that tree. 20 pound touchdown held good. And when he kited out away from it, it's time to get in the boat. He used the big boat this time, which was much more stable. And uh, Ben did a brilliant job steering us out to the fish. We knew there was another snag out there because I found it earlier on today. We steered it away from that one. 
and uh, it was mine. And this is the reason we hang it out to the last minute when we're day only fishing, because of things like this. Awesome. Mwah. Thank you, my darling. You've made my day. Off you go to get bigger. <sighs> Proper beastie. Yeah, good. Literally, I haven't even got the second rod out. I'm gonna to have to get in the boat ASAP, I think, on this one. It's not in a tree, it's just in weed short of the spot. Oh. Come on. This lake is brutal, but not long after, I had a second chance. Feels like a real heavy fish. It didn't feel big at the start, but it feels really heavy now. Oh, powerful, man. Oh, it's a catfish. Oh, it's a catfish. Oh, look at all the snot up the line. After losing whatever that was and then getting this, that is cruel. That is just cruel. This is a cruel, cruel lake. Get in there. Lovely. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. Check that out. 44 pound common. Came over the pre-baited area. The same spot as I caught from yesterday. And uh, it's just ripped off in the middle of the day. It's blazing hot over in Danny's swim. He's got the wind in his face and it said it's quite cool, but here it's a bit of a sun trap, so I'm going to get him back and make the most of this weather. Hello, mate. Hello mate, I've been a kit, but I've come out of Bivy a little while ago and um, I thought I'd see you up here in the edge doing pictures. Have you had one? Yeah mate, I had a uh, big ugly £44 common. Mate, nothing's ugly when it's £44. That's wicked mate, what rod? The same one mate, the one I had the 50 on the other day and uh, the one that I caught yesterday. Right mate, have you managed to get it back out there? The crosswind here is horrendous. 
No, I haven't bothered, mate. Obviously, the wind's really bad and it's absolutely scorching. Right. Uh, how many rods you got out then? No, just the one at the moment, mate. Well, one in the right place, mate, is all you need. I'll tell you what, have you noticed, have you got loads of wood floating around in front of you? No, mate, there's no, uh, no wood around here. Must be a proper sun trap down there because um, I can see loads of people on the beach. It looks like some of them are properly starkers as well. They've got no shame around here, have they? No, mate, well, it is a nudist beach. Yeah, I know, mate, but I mean, come on, we're trying to make a fishing film. I'll tell you what, if, uh, if any of them approach you, I'll um, get, uh, get a security guy involved. I'm quite hoping to get approached, actually. Alright, boss, we're done. Cock's out. I've got time. Roger, mate, I'm coming. Oh, mate, he's giving the take while he's snarkers. <laughs> he's run back to his rods right as the park organisers have driven down the track. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> the last day was quickly slipping away and the long drive home would definitely seem a lot longer if I finished on a lost carp and then a catfish. But unbeknown to me, the fish was still around and it wasn't over yet. We need this, we need this. Come on, pinged over his dorsal there. Is it a carp or is it a dreaded catfish? No, don't back up mate, don't back up. Just keep idling forwards. Seen it, definitely a carp. Definitely a carp. Come on, get in that net. Get in that net. Yes, get in. Oh, we got him. Oh. oh man, what a battle. What a battle. If you've not done this sort of fishing before, it is as close to sea fishing as you can possibly get, but actually fishing for carp. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. And um, in the boat on your own, it, it's, it is hard work. You know, when you've got people with you, it makes the job easier. But these battles with these fish, every one, look at the, look at the dinner plates on that, look. And um, that is the attraction of this kind of lake. Before we could have a proper look at another amazing fish, one of the other rods roared into action. And as usual, chaos followed. I strongly suspect these were pack fish, and having been scared away this morning by the lost fish, and then a big old catfish on the spot, they were obviously back, and on the feed. And now to check out the previous capture. How about that for a mega, mega angry common? A proper battle as they've always been. 
And this one came on the left hand rod. I put three rods out today for the first time. And I put this one six feet further than the other two. Just thinking that they're coming down from Daryl's part of the lake down to here. It always seems to be the right hand rod that goes first. So I've put this one out longer and this one has gone first. Also on the isotonic, that seems to be the winning hook bait by a country mile at the moment. And uh, the old faithful spinner rig, 35 pound boom, um, banging it into the wind like this. I need something really stiff to make sure it doesn't tangle. And on that all important helicopter rig with a heli safe, dumping the lead puts them in the net. Just uh, absolutely awesome to get this one. After losing one this morning, I was absolutely gutted. And then had the catfish after that, just to rub salt in the wound. And then waited all day, and then this guy comes along. Awesome. As the light was fading and Dan was weighing his final capture. It is 42 and a quarter. What a day. I was in, in the final hours of our final day. Could this be the one I was hoping for? That's better. I think it's come off. I'm not sure, I know. Oh, hang on a sec, what's going on here? Yeah, we are in the bag. Dan had yet to present his final fish to the camera, so it was only right for me to come straight to him and help sign off on what had been an insane adventure. Jesus, me boy. Yeah, Fif man. 50 and a quarter. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, boy! <laughs> yeah. Right, I'll put it there. <laughs> Cheers, man. I think that's mission accomplished, didn't it? I'll say so, mate. <laughs> Jobs are good and brilliant. Let's show them the prize. Yeah, look at that. What a way to end an epic session, eh, mate? Oh, incredible, man. End of the day, one each. Last. <laughs> and 42 pound this one. Yours looks a little bit bigger. Go on. Just over 50, mate. What a way to end. And we really did not know how this was going to go. We had 20 year old information to go on. No one wanted to tell us anything about this lake whatsoever. And we just took a gamble. And I don't mind admitting, two days in, I thought we were gonna waste our money and get absolutely nothing. And from then on, it could not have gone more right. A proper roller coaster ride. And I'm so pleased that we've done it. And I just wanna say thank you to all the crew. It's been a massive team effort. All the people behind the scenes make this all possible. And on my crew, We've got Ben the photographer, we've got Carpy Kev behind the cameras, and we've got Jackie Boy as well. And then on Daryl's crew, we've got Paul Riggers the Wildling and Mr. Gary Newman as well. And then also behind the scenes, we've got Jean Philippe who's made all the fishing possible here. That get heavy, bruv. <laughs> oh, mate. Without people like Jean Philippe, this would not have happened. He came to all the meetings with the park officials to make sure it all went perfectly. James has provided excellent food as always. We've been super well fed. And last but by no means least, Big Ian. Big Ian has basically kept us alive the last nine days. He's had close protection security and we've really needed it here. There've been cars done while we've been here. There's been loads of aggro from the locals trying to get us thrown off. They did not want us to come here and catch these fish. And Ian has been by our side the whole time and made sure it's gone without a hitch. So thank you very much. Now, brother, where are we going to go next? Maybe somewhere with some big ones, mate. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the bank sometime. <laughs>